Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. My name is Jason and thanks for watching. Today we're gonna to be checking out a new power station. Now I consider this a micro power station. This is the Sea Techie 240. Now this packs 240 watt hours of storage and it has lithium iron phosphate cells inside. So you guys know from all my previous videos, there's no fire risk with this battery and it has an extremely long lifetime. You can charge this and discharge this 2000 times and still have 80% of the capacity remaining. Now just because this is small doesn't mean it doesn't pack a ton of features. It offers nine different outputs on the front and it can charge five different ways, including dual charging. Now, a few of you may be wondering where you'd use a small battery like this. Now, in my opinion, this is probably the perfect battery to start off if you're looking for your first power station, or if you want to complement an existing power station you already have, this works great for charging laptops, cell phones, tablets, flashlight batteries, drone batteries, uh, basically any little tech gadget you have around camp. You know, how I would use this is have this in my tent or wherever I'm sleeping overnight, charge up my camera, charge up my cell phone so that I'm ready to hit the trail the next day and take all those pictures so I can have those memories for the future. Now let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the build quality for this power station. It's completely surrounded in this aluminum shroud. It's very durable. I love how it has this flexible rubberized handle on top. It only weighs 7.9 pounds, so anybody's gonna be able to carry this thing around. Now the rest of the video, we're gonna dive right into the front display. We're gonna talk about the output, how it's regulated. We're gonna talk about the capacity that I got through all my extensive testing. And we're gonna talk about if there's any quirks or any issues that I saw with this battery. Hopefully you guys are excited to learn more. Stay tuned and let's just dive right into it. Let's go ahead and talk about the front panel. Now at the top here, you have this LCD screen. It gives you a battery level indicator and it also tells you which outputs are enabled. Now I wish I could see, you know, a watts in or out or an actual battery percentage, but this display is so simple, it just lacks that information. Now if you wanna turn on the LED light, you push this LED button and if you hold it down for three seconds, it'll actually turn on an SOS mode and if you tap it, it'll turn it off. To turn on the AC inverter, you just tap this power button and then you tap it again to turn it off. If you wanna turn off or on the power station, you have to hold this button down for about three seconds and it'll turn it on and off. So in the front of this power station, there are four 5521 barrel connectors. The bottom one's for charging and the top three are for the actual output. It comes with this nice dongle that's a 5521 to 12 volt socket. So you can basically run any 12 volt appliance that you'd use a cigarette plug right off this unit. Now it's not regulated, but it has the direct output of a 4S lithium iron phosphate battery. Now when it's fully charged, that's around 14.2 volts. And when it's completely empty, it's right around 12 volts. So you're not gonna have any issues running CPAPs, 12 volt compressor fridges, or anything like that on this battery. Now these connections are rated at 10 amps. Now when I was testing this, I actually was able to pull 155 watts out of one of these connections. So I think the 10 amp limit there is just for the 5521 barrel connector itself. These are not designed for high power output, so I'd stick to 10 amps if you're running something for a long period of time. For a short burst, you definitely could get more power through this connector. It's just gonna get a little bit warm. So one thing to note about this power station is that the USB ports and the 12 volt output are always enabled whenever the power station's on, and you can see that with the display. Let's go ahead and talk about the USB ports on the front. Now you have three USB-A ports, Two of them are just standard 2.4 amps, and then you have a quick charge 3.0. What's really cool about this is you have a USB-C at the bottom that supports 60 watts power delivery. So what that means is you can have an input or an output on this port here. So you can charge a laptop or a tablet or cell phone really quick, or you can even charge this power station by plugging in a power source here. So you can charge this power station at 60 watts by using this, in addition to the charging here, so you can charge this super fast. Now this power station has a USB-C cable included in the box. Now it's really cool because a lot of people don't have these yet, they're really new, so it's awesome they included one. Let's go ahead and talk about the AC inverter that's built in this unit. Remember you turn it on by pushing the power button, there are two AC plugs at the bottom and it supports 200 watts continuous or 300 watts surge. Now I plugged this into my oscilloscope and tested it and it in fact is a pure sine wave with a frequency of 60 hertz and it has an armist voltage of 112 volts AC. Now this puts out really good clean power and I had no issues running devices within its rated limits. In this part of the video, I wanna discharge the battery using the DC output. 
I have my battery load tester here. What we can do is we can put a 0.2C discharge rate on this battery and that will tell us the actual capacity versus the rated capacity. Now this is rated at 240 watt hours. Let's see what we actually get as we go through the discharge test. Okay, so I have a 48 watt load on the battery. This should run for about four to four and a half hours. Let's go ahead and let this run and see what we get. Okay, so during the test we pulled 209 watt hours. Remember this is advertised to have 240. So if we divide that out, gives us about 87% of the advertised capacity. Anything above 85 is pretty decent. The test ran for four hours and 24 minutes, and we also pulled about 16.67 amp hours. So 209 watt hours or 16.67 amp hours. Okay, so now I wanna test the AC inverter efficiency. We can test the efficiency by running down the battery completely while using the AC inverter. This will give us a capacity versus the rated capacity and that will tell us how efficient it is. Now I have my kilowatt meter plugged in with a 45 to 43 watt load and this will get us pretty close to a 0.2 C discharge rate. Okay, so we've come to the end of the AC efficiency test. The battery shut off. From the time lapse, you saw that we got around 190 watt hours. So if you take that 190 and divide it by 240, it gives us the efficiency of the inverter and it came out to be around 79%. Let's go ahead and talk about charging this power station. Now there are four different cables and adapters that come in the box. So there are plenty of ways to put power back into this battery. Now the first way that you can charge this up is by using this 12 volt cigarette plug. So if you have a 12 volt power source, whenever you plug this in, you'll see around 49 watts into this battery. The next way to charge it up would be this USB-C power delivery cable. When I tested this, I saw a charging rate of 56 watts. Another way to charge it up would be using this AC wall adapter. So if you have an AC power source and you plug this in, you'll see about 47 watts charging in on this battery. Now the last way to charge it up would be using a solar panel. Now it comes with MC4 connections, so if your solar panel has those, you can connect those right up. But if you have a portable solar panel, you can also use an adapter to plug directly into the 5521. Now just remember that this supports dual charging, so if you have the USB-C plugged in here and another charging option plugged in here, the max power I saw while testing that was 105 watts, so that's pretty decent on such a small battery. You guys know me, I had to take this out and do some real world solar testing. So let's go ahead and jump into the results for this solar test. So I tested it in three different scenarios. I have two SunPower Flex 50s. I tested one by itself, then I tested these in parallel. And it also tested with this Rock Pals 100 watt folding solar panel. Let's talk about the 50 watt results first. So I plugged this in, I was able to get a ravage around 37 watts and I saw a peak of 45 watts, even though I didn't catch that on camera. Now this is where things start to get interesting. When I plugged in two of these panels in parallel, it did this weird cycling. So it would start at zero watts and go slowly up to 50 and then reset back down to zero. Now I was maybe thought it had something to do with maybe this type of panel. So I tested with the rock pals and I saw the same exact thing. I plugged it in, it went from zero watts all the way up to 50 and then reset back down to zero. I think that this has a 50 watt solar limit. So anytime you go higher than that, it just doesn't know what to do. For now, the only results that I could say that work well with this is a 50 watt solar panel. So don't expect more than 50 watts. Now, I always like to demonstrate how the LED light functions. So it has this really nice, easy to use switch. You just tap it, it'll turn it on. It's a very diffused LED light. It's a very warm light. So it's uh, probably around uh, 3000 K and uh, you can turn it on and off pretty quickly. And then if you want it to go into strobe mode or party mode, you click and hold down. And then uh, once you let go, it goes into party mode and then you just tap it to turn it off. So I do like the LED light on this power station. I think it's super useful. It's very dispersed, so it'll light up a big area. So if the power's out and you need to use this to either cook food or just to get around your house, or if you're camping, you wanna light up your tent, this light's gonna do a great job. Okay guys, we're at the end of the video. I'd love to just give you some final thoughts. There's two things I wanna talk about. I wanna just cover everything that came in the box 
And then I want to talk about pros and cons for this power station so you can make a decision if this is right for you. Now, when I opened up the box, I was completely blown away because it came with all these adapters and even a USB-C cable. Now, most power stations don't come with all this stuff. So for a budget power station to come with that, that is pretty awesome. Now, it comes with this warranty card. Now, this warranty card offers a one-year warranty for this power station, and it actually has their contact information and their website inside this card. So if you have any issues out of the box or if you need to fulfill the warranty down the road, reach out to them, they should help you. It also comes with this uh, voltage curve for the lithium iron phosphate battery chemistry and a couple other facts about it. So pretty cool to have that. Now this user manual is awesome. It has a ton of information and I learned a lot by reading this. I always suggest you guys read through the owner's manual anytime you're gonna be using this. Now it also comes with these rubberized feet that go on the bottom of the power station. So if they come off or you wanna replace them, you can put those on. Now, one thing I always recommend you do when you buy one of these power stations is completely discharge it all the way down and then charge it back up just to see if there's any issues. Also test all the outputs and make sure they all work. Now I have not had any issues with mine, but I always recommend you do that. Now let's go ahead and start with my pros and cons list. Now let's go ahead and talk about the pros first. Now. One of the first pros I wanna talk about is the build quality. I love this aluminum case. I love the rubberized ergonomic handle. This thing is durable. It's just really good for the price. The next thing I wanna talk about is actually the lithium iron phosphate cells inside. You're gonna get a really good amount of life cycles out of this battery. You get 2000 life cycles and you'll have 80% of the battery capacity remaining. So what is that like five, 10 years? No matter, you know, you could use this daily and it'd still be going five years later. You, you don't get that with other battery chemistries. The next pro I wanna talk about is the cost. This is super affordable. Um, you know, a ton of people will be able to afford this and uh, it's just a really good uh, price for performance. And the last pro I wanna talk about is portability. This is super lightweight, easy to move around, very compact. I'm just very happy uh, moving this around and anybody should be able to use this, no issues at all. Some larger power stations are heavy and you can't really move them around if, if you're frail or you're older, but this is definitely one that anybody be able to move around. Now let's go ahead and talk about the cons. Now the first con I wanna talk about is the actual display. Now the display does not have a ton of information on there. It'd be better if it showed an input or output wattage or if it showed an actual percentage for the battery remaining. Now, can you get by without it, that information? Sure, you can get by without it, but it would be amazing to have it on there. Just make this battery that much better. The next con would be the inverter efficiency. We didn't quite see you know, amazing numbers on the, the inverter efficiency. Still pretty good, but I would like to see a little bit higher capacity there. Now, your results may vary. You may see higher than this, but this is just what this battery specifically tested at. And the last con is just the solar charging. Now I could only get about 40 watts input on this, so I would have loved to see a little bit more than that. And I just ran into the issues I already explained that earlier, so I did not see tons of solar charging on this battery. Now it definitely charges at 45 watts. That's pretty decent, especially for the small capacity, and you have plenty of other ways to charge it up. Now overall, would I recommend this? I definitely would recommend this. I'd recommend this for um, just a small overnight camping trip or an additional uh, power station to add to your you know, fleet of portable power. And uh, I think it'll work well for a lot of people. Now, if you guys have any questions about this power station, go ahead and throw a comment down below and I'd love to get back to you. Basically, that's everything that I wanted to talk about in this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Give me a thumbs up if you like the content. We'll see you guys in the next video.